Okay, next up is refractory periods. Again, a very important question from both SEQ and SEQ point of view. Uh, since we did the hard work in discussing the sodium channel in detail, uh, in this we'll just, uh, we'll just briefly explain uh, very briefly what are these four refractory periods. Uh, for um, uh, MBBS and postgrads, uh, it's, it's good to know these four. For well, the rest of the uh, LR Health Science students, uh, they can suffice uh, with absolute and relative, inshallah. Okay. All right. So let's just say absolute. What is absolute refractory period? When we say refractory, we mean no entry, nothing doing, door is closed. This this is the concept. Okay. So when we say absolute refractory period for say cardiac muscle, we are saying that during this period, you can do whatever you want but it will not develop and or conduct a second action potential. So if a muscle is conducting an action potential, a muscle fiber, and during the absolute refractory period, it's in the absolute refractory period, no matter what happens, it will not conduct a second action potential, not develop it, not conduct it, okay? Uh, this is absolute, so it, 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 this is the value 0.25 to 0.3, and where is it? It, it is here, right here, absolute refractory period. So this is the whole, this light blue line, I hope you appreciate this. Let me uh, clarify this to you um, from here. It's uh, this, this here, this whole thing here, this light blue stuff is where this entire thing is included this right down to this. Okay. So let's say the entire depolarization and then the first third of repolarization. All of this is covered in absolute refractory period. Uh, nothing doing, no new action potentials will take place during this part of the action potential. Okay. Now, what else? You have in uh, uh, relative refractory period, which is right here. Relative refractory period is here. And this is where the whole place is right here. It's the light blue to this whole pink thing. And it's called it corresponds with uh, this whole area right down till here. Okay, so this is the last two thirds of the uh, uh, repolarization. All right. This is where this is called relative refractory period. Its value is 0 0.05 seconds. This is where if you apply a strong stimulus, a stronger than normal stimulus, and a new action potential will, will generate and will also it starts to propagate. Uh, in simpler terms, in absolute refractory period, no action potential, nothing doing. In relative refractive period, you can have a new action potential, which is something like this. So say here, let me clear this. Here, right here, you gave it a blast, okay? You really gave a big stimulus right here. So what will happen is it will depolarize, depolarize from this onwards, and this will become a new action potential. Tick, all right, okay. So this is the difference between absolute and relative. Now for the uh, MBBS and postgrad students, uh, there is an effective refractory period which is shown here. So during this time in the uh, effective refractory period, here in this in this zone, uh, you can have a situation where a strong stimulus is applied and uh, a action potential is developed, but it does not propagate. That's that. And then to sum it up, the supra, this is this is the part. And remember, this is also uh, ev everything behind, all of the concept which is behind is sodium inactivation gate closure. And we've discussed that the DV over DT, we have discussed all that. So supra normal period where uh, the membrane is primed, is most ready for a new action potential is this period. I have explained the DV over DT concept 
I'm just uh, mentioning here that it's called supranormal period for uh, a generation of a new action potential. Okay. Okay, this is a nice slide uh, uh, where you can compare ventricle, atrial, and uh, SA nodal action potential. I'm introducing this because this will be this will feature in the coming lectures. Uh, you can see that the, the shape of the uh, action potential of ventricle and atrium are comparable. However, as I mentioned, the, the, the change is in the size of the plateau. Okay, and we can, you can clearly appreciate that ventricle is a bigger muscle, hence it has a longer plateau and atria are smaller, uh, 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 smaller muscles and hence they have a uh, rather clumsy looking plateau. Okay, the rest of the shape is similar. However, this is a uh, this is really an alien looking uh, action potential. Uh, it has a long phase four, uh, which is incremental as you can see, then a funny looking small depolarization, very long, weird looking repolarization. You know what's, what's going on here. We will talk about this when it comes up. So sinoatrial node is later, later for later. And this is the excitation contraction coupling. So cardiac action potential takes place. Calcium enters the cell during plateau. Then there is this thing called calcium induced calcium release. This is also from the SR, the sarcoplasmic reticulum. These are also called calcium sparks. We'll, we'll see a pictorial depiction of this in the next slide, inshallah. Then calcium is now available to bind to troponin C. This cross bridging, uh, cross uh, bridge, bridging or cross bridge cycling going on. And this leads to muscle contraction. When you take away the calcium, uh, uh, put it back where it came from the SR, there is relaxation, okay? And this is the diagram that I'm, I was trying to tell you. Uh, what happens is, okay, so action potential took place and you had calcium coming into the cell. This is the T-tubule. This is the same uh, T-tubule and sarcoplasmic uh, interaction that you uh, st have studied in a neuromuscular junction where you, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, in nerve where you mention excitation contraction coupling, you see, you, 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 uh, this, uh, you saw in that diagram that the T-tubule dips into the depth of the cell and there it, there it is where it interacts with the interior of the cell. That diagram is exactly like this diagram. The difference is that was skeletal muscle, this is cardiac muscle, okay? So cardiac, cardiac muscle, is dependent remember this is one of the main differences of in contraction uh, cardiac muscle is dependent on ecf calcium for its contraction it's a very important point so it requires this action potential it requires depolarization and then plateau for it to open up the calcium and calcium enters when calcium enters into the cell uh, it interacts with the sarcoplasmic reticulum which holds stores intracellular stores of calcium remember this calcium is from the ecf this calcium is sr calcium so when this calcium comes it knocks the door and it causes the calcium to come out which is called calcium spark this whole process is called calcium induced calcium release okay so this has come out it is now available for contraction okay that's half of the story now when you relax the muscle calcium is released from the uh, troponin C. Now uh, it goes back into the calcium stores. And this is where the perceptive students will note that when it came out, it came out because of a passive process. The calcium just moved in and disturbed the membrane uh, uh, protein uh, and calcium got released while Calcium reuptake is an active phenomenon. So it, there's an ATPase which uses energy and, and pulls back calcium uh, because you don't want calcium roaming around too much in the cell either, okay? You don't want over excitation or uh, over contraction of the cardiac muscle, okay? Now, uh, so much of it is stored inside and the rest of it is very importantly, is exchanged with sodium right here. Very important point. So calcium goes out. This is an antiport mechanism. You should know this. It's a form of transport. Calcium goes out, sodium comes in. And then sodium is also sorted out. How? 
through this transporter so that we don't want extra sodium in uh, either okay because it draws in water you know this it's electrogenic uh, pump and it also controls volume so you are pumping in extra sodium so this extra sodium goes out and potassium comes in through the sodium potassium atpas right so this is that now question what if i were to do something naughty hmm? if i were to block the sodium potassium atpas this is question number 2 for for students let's say okay so i block this what will happen to this muscle cell this is my question respond it, only if you guys respond is if i see some responses then i will comment on it i won't give it for free all right okay Okay, at the end, this is a nice summary of this whole thing. You can ignore the sino, uh, the SA node, and this information, but it will come in handy if I remember. I'll paste this uh, this uh, chart again uh, when I discuss SA node. Uh, but in any case, please remember this bit that we have discussed today. Uh, it is nice summary of the type of tissue, uh, duration, upstroke, with, or who is doing it. Uh, the plateau who is involved and phase 4 depolarization per kanji system as we later will find out can also act as a pacemaker this is the end of this particular lecture